right now on our Indiana. The Hoosier football team has a new starting quarterback, and the men's soccer team has extended their shutout streak to five in a row. And we check out the star-studded list of the 2017 IU Athletics Hall of Fame inductees. That and much more coming up. Our Indiana starts now. Good evening, and welcome to the newest installment of Our Indiana. I'm Joe Canner. And I'm David Williams. The IU men's soccer team has been on a roll these past few weeks, as they have shut out their past five opponents, netting a total of eight shutouts on the season. Within these shutouts, the Hoosiers had a big game, big win against number one, Notre Dame, last week. Joining us today is Our Indiana's Dan Black to go over how the Hoosiers pulled out this big win. The IU men's soccer team looked to make up for last year's 4-0 defeat in South Bend when they hosted the Fighting Irish last Tuesday night. The Hoosiers set the tone for the game in the first half, out shooting Notre Dame 10-2 with three shots on goal compared to the Fighting Irish's one. None of those shots reached the back of the net in the first half, resulting in a slower start than they wanted. It's, it's a little frustrating at times, but I mean, we, we, uh, we knew it was coming and we just got to keep doing what we were doing because we were playing well and uh, we were creating chances, just didn't hit the back of the net. The scoring breakthrough finally came in the 67th minute when junior Austin Poncho netted what would be the game-winning goal off of assists by Francesco Moore and Spencer Glass. Spencer is one of the better servers um, on our team, if not the top server. Well, and then Poncho doesn't know when to not make a run, meaning he's always going to finish the play. The bigger story of tonight's game was the stellar play of IU's defense. The Hoosiers refused to quit defensively throughout the game. IU would allow the Fighting Irish only eight total shots by the end of the 90 minutes. It was an easy night for freshman goalkeeper Trey Muse, who only had to make one save in the win. This shutout marks the seventh of the season for IU and is the most in the team's first nine matches of the season since 1979. Grant and Timmy and our backs, they're as good as they come to, so I thought again it was a real bit of a stalemate. Tonight's 1-0 victory will surely make up for last year's 4-0 loss at South Bend. It's a resume win for us as we move forward through the year and our guys are really excited. Last year was a tough year. To Long trip back from South Bend, and uh, this is uh, a lot of smiles in locker rooms. For our Indiana, I'm Dan Black. We're joined now at the desk by Dan Black. Dan, the question all the Hoosier fans want to know is will the shutout streak continue this weekend when IU travels to Penn State? Well, Joe, you'd expect it to. Like we said, they they're on a five-game win streak. They've outshot or outscored their opponents. I'm sorry, 17 to nothing during that stretch. Uh, Penn State's on a streak of their own, but a losing streak. They are, they've lost three straight. They've been shut out three straight times. So you'd expect Indiana to come in there and handle Penn State pretty easily. Dan, with high hopes of another shutout, who is going to be the player to watch for slash have the biggest impact on the hopeful shutout? Well, there's plenty of players you can pick from offensive, defensively. But i got to go with freshman goalkeeper Trey Muse. He's got five straight shutouts, eight on the season. I mean, for a freshman, although he has plenty of talent in front of him, like we said, both offensive and defensively, for a freshman to play that well this season, you gotta, you got to think that he'd be a huge uh, factor this weekend. Well, we look forward to seeing it this weekend. Thank you, Dan. Following the big game against the Irish, the Hoosiers continued on their shutout trend, bashing Santa Clara 5-0 last Saturday. This game was a real team effort with five different Hoosiers scoring off of a multitude of assists. Leading the Hoosiers was freshman Griffin Dorsey with a goal of, and two assists followed by junior Reese Buckmaster netting three assists, which is one short of the school record. The most impressive part of this victory is that the Hoosiers scored four goals within the span of nine minutes and 33 seconds. The Hoosiers followed the sweep of Santa Clara with an in-state foe, the Evansville Aces, on Tuesday evening. Freshman Mason Toy started off the Hoosiers early, scoring off an assist from Andrew Gutman within the first five minutes. Toy's early goal was the only goal in the first half as the Hoosiers took on a 1-0 lead going into the second half. Junior Andrew Grootman finished the game with that assist to Toy as well as netting a goal for himself 
heading in the cross off the corner kick from Trevor Swartz to give IU a 2-0 lead. Toy's second goal of the game came in the 68th minute off a rebounded save from the Evansville keeper. That goal was Toy's sixth goal in the season, making him the leading scorer for the Hoosiers as a freshman. Scoring the final goal of the game was freshman Thomas Schwar driving right through the center of the Aces defense, then sneaking a shot right past the keeper. And with that goal, it gives IU 29 goals in the first 11 weeks of play. This is the first time this has happened since 1999 when the Hoosiers scored a matching 29 goals. With this win against Evansville, head coach Todd Yeagley netted his 100th career victory. Here's Yeagley talking about this monumental win. It's special. I mean, it, you know, growing up in a household where, you know, winning culture is, is very strong. Um, I've been around a lot of people that have known how to win, and, um, and it's truly the environment here that I'm just the fortunate one to be as the head coach. And the staff and the players that we have is, is, uh, is the reason that, you know, you know, I'm obviously able to receive the honor tonight to have it, but it's, the, it's this group of players and, and, uh, and players that are here and the players that played before. And that's no different from the 544 wins that my father had. That's a reflection on the players and the, the mentality of this program. And as the head coach, you're, you're, you're a part of that, but it's really the collection of everything. So it's on behalf of everyone, really. IU football may have found a new face of the program as head coach Tom Allen named Peyton Ramsey the starting quarterback on Monday. Ramsey had been in a rotation with senior Richard Lego, but the younger Ramsey has separated himself with this play as of late. He led the team to a road victory earlier in this year over Virginia and has thrown four touchdowns to only one interception so far this season. Exciting. You know, this is what I've dreamed of. This is something that I've, I've worked at for a really, really long time, so it's really exciting for me. I think I'm ready. You know, I've, I've had opportunities to go out and play and play against good football teams. So I feel like from that standpoint, I'm, I'm prepared and confident and ready to go. Develop as a leader. Just get around my teammates. Um, earn the trust of them. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, I think your teammates have to trust you, um, especially if trust the quarterback, if you guys are going to go out and be successful. Ramsey's first start will come this Saturday as the Hoosiers host Charleston Southern. You can catch that game at 3.30 p.m. on the Big Ten Network. This past weekend, the Running Hoosiers were in action at the Sam Bell Invitational, hosted at the IU Championship Cross Country Course here in Bloomington. It was a solid weekend for both the men's and women's team, with the men's team coming on top, with four runners finishing in the top ten. Sophomore Ben Veach led the Hoosiers, finishing third in the 8K with an overall time of 24 minutes and 40 seconds. Even though the women's team didn't come on top for the weekend, redshirt Junior, redshirt junior Catherine Receiver finished first in the women's 6K with a time of 20 minutes and 14 seconds, which, a, which sets a new Hoosier record at the IU Championship Cross Country Course. The men's and women's team will be back in action on October 13 at the Nuttycomb Wisconsin Invitational. Indiana women's soccer took on the Fighting Illini of Illinois on Sunday in a matchup that featured two teams who were trying to find their footing. The star of this game was Illinois' Cara Marbury, who sparked the Illini early and often in this one. We take you to the 26th minute, where Patricia George crosses one in front of the right to find Marbury, who converts and knocks it past a distressed Bethany Copel to give Illinois the one to nothing edge. Then in the 87th minute, Katie Lay from 23 yards out finds who else but Cara Marbury. And Marbury again would make the Hoosiers pay. Things looked bleak for IU as this Marbury put the orange and blue up three goals. But the cream and crimson would attempt to rally late when sophomore midfielder Chandra Davidson found forward Michaela Brown, who said thank you very much and found the back of the net. But it was too little too late for the Hoosiers as the Illini would hold on for the 3-1 victory in this one. The Hoosiers will be in search of their first win in five games on Friday when they travel to Minneapolis to take on Minnesota. The Indiana softball team entered Sunday 1-1 one one in fall ball play. The Hoosiers hosted their in-state rival IUPUI for a doubleheader at Andy Moore Field. Game 1 was largely controlled by the Jaguars, who carried a 3-1 lead into the sixth inning. But in the bottom of the sixth, the Hoosiers' offense came alive, scoring seven runs behind aggressive base running, some defensive mistakes by the Jags, and a few timely hits from Rebecca Blitz and Gabby Jenkins. The big inning was enough to secure the Hoosiers an 8-3 win. Game 2, a slightly different story, same result. 
It was all Indiana as IUPUI's offense failed to keep pace. Shonda Stanton's ladies treated the second game like it was a home run derby. Three different Hoosiers sent balls sailing into the seats, including Taylor Uden, Annika Baez, and Rebecca Blitz. This one was set to cruise control just like an English automobile as IU cruised to an easy win 10-1 over the Jaguars. The Hoosiers will next be in action Saturday when they travel to Indianapolis to take on Heartland Community College and Butler University. All the excellence that IU Athletics has been experiencing this past few weeks, it's nice to take a look back at some of IU's past and no better time to do that with the 2017 IU Athletics Hall of Fame inductees. Last week, Indiana University's Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, Fred Glass, announced the 2017 Class of Hall of Fame inductees. This star-studded class ranges from student athletes that have excelled while here at IU and gone on to professional careers, all the way to a women's sports administrator who, in her own way, changed the IU women's athletic program. The inductees will be presented during the halftime show, the November 4th game against Wisconsin. Coming up next on Our Indiana, we take a look at the upcoming basketball season, as well as what's in store for IU Athletics this upcoming week. You won't want to miss this, so keep it right here on Our Indiana. deal of ESPN. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Indiana University. Welcome back to our Indiana. Basketball season is just around the corner. Joining us today is Zane Piarly giving us a little insight on the upcoming 2017-2018 basketball season. Thanks guys. Sophomore forward Deron Davis made major strides this offseason, and first-year head coach Archie Miller will be counting on him to lead the young Hoosier front court in 2017. The Archie Miller era at IU became one step closer to starting Thursday, with the Hoosiers hosting their 2017-2018 Media Day at Assembly Hall. With six new faces donning the cream and crimson and five seniors on the team this year, there was one Hoosier in particular who earned high praise from his teammates. Sophomore forward Deron Davis and his 20 pound weight loss. So to be able to tell he looks quicker, faster, um, he gets off the ground uh, faster than he did. Deron, I've just seen a new confound um, confidence in him. I just believe since he's been changing his body, he's just more confident in his game. Um, he's more willing to go at people instead of just saying, oh, I'm too tired or just taking a couple plays off. My athletic, he's dunking all the time. And, and <laughs> last year we had someone beg him to dunk the ball. And, um, just the shape that he's in and his mental state where he's at, having to go through a grueling summer, and, and I think it's not only played off for him physically, but mentally as well. Obviously, Davis's teammates has already seen the big improvements he's made this offseason. But when did this happen exactly? Well, Davis spent 12 weeks this summer right here in Bloomington, working to take his game to the next level. No, nah, I didn't have to think about it. I just, uh, the only really thing I just had to talk to my mom about it, because, you know, she kind of wanted to see me, especially after the long year. But, I mean, when I told her that, uh, you know, you know, for us to, you know, for me to reach my goals, um, for me to do what I want to do, you know, I got you know, to get in shape. I got to, you know, be ready to dominate this year. Davis transformed his body this summer with the help of new strength and conditioning coach Cliff Marshall. But Coach Miller is looking forward to seeing how the new Davis can contribute on the floor this season for the Hoosiers. Be really on top of Deron in terms of the technique and the effort level because when you don't have those two things, you foul. But Davis is up for the challenge in year two. And just overall, just ready for the season. Last year as a you know freshman, I was coming in pretty nervous. So this year I'm ready to get the ball rolling and uh, have a great year. For our Indiana, I'm Zan Piarly. Joining us back at the desk is Zan Piarly. Zan, there's lots of optimism surrounding this young team, but what can Hoosier fans reasonably expect for an Archie Miller coach team in his first season? Well, Joe, I wouldn't, expect the, I wouldn't set the bar too high for this IU basketball team. It is Archie Miller's first year. They are fin coming off a 10th place finish in the Big Ten last year. 
they are losing Thomas Bryant, James Blackman Jr., OG Ananobi. So I think you see a team that's in the middle of the road in the Big Ten. There's a lot of young players on this team, but there's also a lot of senior leaders that could propel this team into something better than usual. But Colin Hartman said on media day that they're all kind of freshmen at this point with Archie Miller bringing in his new system. So it'll be interesting to see where they finish. I think that they'll be able to make the NCAA tournament, but I don't know if they'll be able to get past the second round or so. Zane, with this new and improved Deron Davis, what is going to be his main aspect of fulfilling that leadership role? Yeah, I mean, Thomas Bryant was the one that was kind of the leader in the front court last year. Now he's gone, so Deron has to step up and fulfill that role. And there's freshmen behind him, Clifton Moore, Justin Smith, that are going to be really big and probably getting really big minutes off the bench for IU. Um, and I think that he can show and lead by example. Last year, Duran was pretty timid coming in, and he really changed his body, as we saw in the package in the offseason. And then also, just throughout the whole regular season, his freshman year, he really progressed every single step of the way. So I think showing by, leading by example and showing the freshman the right thing to do, I think he'll be good in that sense. Thanks, Ann. Well, redshirt junior Luke Timian became a household name for Hoosier fans when he got 10 passes for 72 yards in the Ohio State game to open up the season. Our Mackenzie Salmon caught up with Luke in this week's edition of Who's That Hoosier? Mackenzie? Thanks, guys. I'm here with wide receiver and redshirt junior Luke Timian. Luke, you're from Texas. What was football like for you growing up, and what made you gravitate towards something like that? Uh, where I come from, it's almost like a religion. Uh, people say that, but it's it's pretty accurate. Um, you know, the whole t the whole town closes down to come to the games and stuff like that. So, um, you know, most kids in our high school like to play football just because it's such a big deal. So, would you say there's anyone in particular in your life that's impacted you to play football? Probably my brother and my dad. And my dad, he played it a little bit, but he was always a big fan of it. So, like, we would always. Uh, you know, watch it on TV growing up and stuff like that. So why did you choose IU? What was your reasoning for coming here? So I actually went to Oklahoma State first, um, and then I just I built a relationship with Coach Johns, who was here previously. Um, and, like, once I decided to transfer, then just, you know, kept that relationship with him going and felt like this would be the best fit for me. So is there anyone in the locker room that you're friends with off the field? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely a couple guys. My best friend off the field is Nick Westbrook. Um, he recently just got injured, so I've been spending a lot of time with him just to make sure his spirits are, are up and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So, I get this is my last question I have for you. What has been one of your favorite moments playing for this team, and why? Top of my head, I would say the Michigan State win last year. Um, just to be a part of something like that. It was really special. The, the fans rushed the field and all that, and that was, that was really cool. It was a really special experience for me. Thank you so much. Yeah. For our Indiana, I'm Mackenzie Salmon. Thanks, Mackenzie. Be sure to look out for Luke Timian on Saturday when IU takes on Charleston Southern. Before we sign off, let's fast forward and take a look at the week ahead for IU Athletics. Brandon Riley joins us now with more. Thanks guys, there's a lot of action going on this weekend, so let's get started. The number one ranked Indiana men's soccer team is on the road this weekend, looking to continue their winning ways as they take on the 2-6 Penn State Nittany Lions. You can catch the game on BTM Plus at 7 p.m. Moving on to women's soccer, the Hoosiers head to Minnesota Friday night for a Big Ten matchup you won't want to miss, beginning at 7 p.m. Sunday, the team will travel to Madison, on w Madison Wisconsin at 2 p.m. Both games will be aired on BTN+. Plus. In women's volleyball news, Friday night the team will look to capture their first Big Ten win of the season when they travel to Evanston to take on a scrappy Northwestern team. The first set, the first set for the service set for 8 p.m. and you can watch it on BTN+. Plus. Saturday night the team then travels to Champaign as they take on the 24th ranked Illinois Fighting Illini at 8 p.m. This is the second meeting between these teams this season as the Hoosiers look to pull off the upset against one of the best blocking teams in the nation. The Indiana football team returns to Bloomington as they take on Charleston Southern in their first ever meeting. The Hoosiers will have a new face running, running the offense when redshirt freshman Peyton Ramsey gets his first start of the season. Look for junior Mike Majette to help take some of the pressure off Ramsey when he makes his return after being out the past two games due to injury. Kickoff is set for 3.30 Saturday on the Big Ten, on the Big Ten Network. That's all I have for you guys this weekend, and as always, if you miss any of the action this weekend, you can find it on iuhoosiers.com. 
Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brandon. Well, that does it for this episode of Our Indiana. I'm David Williams. And I'm Joe Kanner. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.